This is Joseph Coco. I'm at TCAF 2015 on behalf of Becca Hilburn's Art Process Blog. Keep on trucking, Nato Soup. It's the end of the first day. If you could introduce yourself, Vera, please. Uh, my name is Vera Green Tea, and I'm the founder of Green Tea Publishing. And I write books called Recipes for the Dead, Nanette of the Pagan Spirits, and Papa. Okay, awesome. And um, I first met you at New York Comic Con. How long have you been producing? Uh, the uh, recipes for the dead and um, your your other lines. So I started about four years ago. Okay, and you were primarily uh, self-publishing smaller books before then, like uh, no, no, uh, that's mini not, comics. I, oh. I didn't publish anything before then. I okay. had a completely different job, and I'm like, why am I doing this? I ran into comics. Yeah, well, you obviously had a lot of uh, skill and talent coming into the comics yeah. industry. What were you doing before comics, if you don't mind um, me asking? I wrote letters to rich people asking for money on behalf of a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you're self-trained or you went to a, a, a university? I went to school for um, English um, and uh, art, art history. Okay. So, no art training or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. But I read a lot of books. Yeah. That helps. Right. So, some of the books you work on, you also write, correct? But some yes. of them... Um, um, almost all of them so far I, I write, but there are a couple that I do take from other people that they write and okay. draw. And that's something you had planned to do all along, or you're just waiting for the right writer to come along? No, I just sort of wait. Um, um, and when I see something, I also invite people to come and write for me. Um, so, we'll see. Okay. <laughs> I spend a more time, I guess, writing than um, asking people, but when I see good work, I'm just like, come! <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Um, so what are some of the inspirations for your work? I was first introduced to it with uh, Recipes for the Dead. I believe you had both issues at NYCC. Um, where, did, uh, where did the inspiration for those uh, issues come from? Um, cooking, for the most part, as you yeah. can tell from the title. I'm, I love baking a lot. Um, I spend a lot of time just in the kitchen, just hanging out and making things. And, and one day I thought, I'm not that great of a baker, I'm a much better writer. Maybe I should talk, <laughs> maybe I should write about baking. <laughs> Yeah, well, it, um, unfortunately, I don't have the uh, comments in front of us right now because we had to move away from the table. But uh, it it definitely doesn't look like you just picked up on um, on uh, visual art. You you have quite a knack for it. Um, your uh, your work is entirely digital or primarily digital? Well, I'm the writer, but um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, it's okay. But um, the artists that I work with tend to be. A sort of a in between, like hybrids. Um, they most of them have already went over to mostly digital, but a lot of them do both, where they use Copic markers and then clean it up with Photoshop. Okay, that makes sense. So it starts off as markers and then they move towards um, Photoshop. Okay. And um, what's been your experience with TCAF? Is this your first time coming to the show? This is my first time, and I love it. It's, okay. It's an amazing convention, full of like first of all. Everybody here is super nice, and just um, and all the work here is just amazing. And I don't know, I just everything I've seen so far has been like just really, really pleasant. <laughs> okay. Uh, what other conventions uh, have you done aside from TCAF? Are you, have you mainly done independent comic conventions? No, mainly I've done New York Comic Con, and I'm yeah. done and doing a special edition also in June. Um, and I've done like where's, smaller New Where's York Special ones. Edition? So that's in New York. That's a New York Comic Con's other convention. Okay. Um, I guess Repop, I think. And um, yeah, it's, it's just a, it's a smaller convention based only for comics artists, less on cosplay, more on the comics. Yeah. Um, and it's, it was good last year. That was the first year. This year is going to be the second year. We'll see. Hopefully, it will grow into itself. But it's already been great for me last year. Awesome. Uh, so, do you have any upcoming projects that we should know about? You mentioned uh, the. Uh, I'm sorry. You mentioned the next Nintel was coming out soon, correct? Right. Yeah, Issue three. three yeah, yep. out of four is coming out, and then four hopefully will follow soon after. Okay. Uh, and you've already written out everything for those. And yes. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> Right, and what's been your experience working uh, in the comic industry as a writer? You've just um, jumped straight into comics, you said? I did, yes. Okay. 
Oh, it's a very interesting experience. Um, you, is there a lot of back and forth with the artists that you've worked with, or you've known them for a while, so it, it, um, things are pretty cut and dry? I don't know if they're cut and dry, but um, <laughs> I've known them, I meet them as I do the work, and okay. then we sort of just find out each other's personalities throughout the working of the comics, Yeah. which so far has luckily turned out only great, but could have been bad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, would you have any advice to someone who's considering becoming a writer uh, for comics? Yeah. Like, how, how would they get into the industry? Well, my, my biggest advice would be is to start writing something smaller, something that you know you can finish. Right. And then uh, once you finish it, start writing something else. And just and that, that's how you get better. If you start writing with a, something really big and an epic, you're just going to... And the fla- most people I feel end up floundering but if you yeah. write smaller things one at a time and just you learn faster and, and you get more work out there and then you can show it to people like editors and publishers and show them what you can do okay uh, so what's been your experience at TCAF in, com- in comparison to some of the New York shows that you've done um, it's friendlier people I think <laughs> yeah <laughs> New York doesn't exactly have a reputation to be the most friendly place. So. It's not the most friendly. New York has some has some good pros going for it, uh, but TCAF is just it's a really sweet little convention. Um, I guess it's not that little anymore, but it's <laughs> but it's really sweet and it's just. In the, I love that it's in the library. Yeah, I'm a big fan of libraries, so just seeing this one has been. Amazing. Yeah, I read an interview with Chris Butcher, and he said the most distinct thing about TCAF is that it's so strongly partnered with the library, and that yeah. everyone in the United States believes that's just never going to happen at this scale. Anyway, right. obviously, there's lots of small local comic book conventions, but something to the scale of TCAF just is difficult for the United States government, apparently. <laughs> Um, so, would you have any advice to someone who's considering coming to key, to a writer who's considering tabling at TCAF for the first time? Um, well, today was my very first day doing that, and um, yeah. without going in cold, it was fairly easy. People are really nice. Um, you know, make sure you bring enough change. Yeah. <laughs> just and, and just smile and be friendly. <laughs> And okay. people will gravitate towards you. All right, and where could we find your work online? I know you released a lot of your comics through Kickstarter, uh, right. but what about the um, back issues? Um, you could get it through my website, greenteapublishing.com. Okay. You could also follow me at Lady Green Tea on Twitter. And yeah, that's it. All right, well, thank you, Vera. I hope you have a good tea calf. Thank you so much.